Hi everyone, Othony No Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Deaf Heaven album, Ordinary Corrupt Human Love. Deaf Heaven is a San Francisco rock band on their fourth full-length album over here. If you are familiar with Deaf Heaven, you already know that their claim to fame is a pretty unique and anthemic blend of genres like black metal and screamo and shoegaze. Genres that prior to the band's breakout record, Sunbather, seemed like they were in completely different solar systems, but actually had more common ground than we thought. These respective rock styles came together in a very triumphant set of songs on that record. Transcending genre boundaries, cultural boundaries too, this is easily one of the most popular and critically acclaimed metal albums of the decade. Now the band's attempts at following this album up a few years ago with New Bermuda I found personally to be kind of underwhelming, a kind of lackluster sequel that featured tons and tons of cliched post-rock passages that had already been done to death by third wave bands like Explosions in the Sky and every other band that has directly copied Explosions in the Sky. So on that record, I kind of found that Deaf Heaven were punching under their weight. I was hoping they would come back with a vengeance on this new album over here. And it seemed like the band was really gonna come back with a vengeance on this one, pull out all the stops considering that some of the teaser tracks were pretty good, that the record contains an hour of material, a lot of the tracks on this thing rolling past 10 minutes in length. So even though I went into this thing hoping and expecting Deaf Heaven to really go above and beyond, I actually think this is their worst album yet. And the band really truly does put their worst foot forward with the opening track, You Without End, which is aesthetically the worst combination of ideas I've heard all year. One, super plain and cheap synth piano arpeggios, cheesy glam guitar soloing, the band's typical wretched vocals, which the performance of are okay, but in this instrumental backdrop sound completely out of place, the overly triumphant chord progression, the generic post-rock passages, the ridiculously melodramatic spoken word bits on this thing, all of that combined with the seven minute runtime of this song makes it absolute torture. Death Heaven was once an exciting band because of their ability to creatively bring together these seemingly different genres of music in such a way where their combination seems seamless and also through their production, through their compositional abilities displayed a deep and, and passionate knowledge for these respective styles of music too. Now what they're presenting as the opening track of this record is just a corny combination of potpourri pastiche just lazily slapped together and expecting the audience to just drool over it because, whoa, what a bunch of weird quirky stuff we never heard on the same track before, what? Thankfully, the following cuts aren't nearly as much of an aesthetic nightmare. The song Honeycomb has a pretty strong start. Anthemic chord progression, lots of dramatic drums, which fit very nicely against the band's very abrasive and black metal inspired vocals, the wintry reverb surrounding the guitars. The track eventually undergoes some very harmonious and intense instrumental buildups. There's a shift where the guitars take on more of an indie rock tone. It's all pretty fantastic, except for the tepid post-rock outro of the song song that lasts about three minutes and change. It's so drab it makes me forget that this style of music was once a creative hotbed in the rock underground. I pretty much feel the same way about the tepid post-rock intro of the next track, Canary Yellow, which, honest to God, just sounds like jangly guitar elevator music. Eventually, this transitions into some legitimately righteous riffs, embellished with some pretty sharp little guitar leads that transition us from one guitar passage to another. There's some pretty blissful black metal builds in the last leg of the track that fit surprisingly well against this guitar soloing that's a pretty reminiscent of classic rock, hard rock, pretty melancholy chord progression too. The on and on and on we choke on vocal refrain hanging in the background at the very end of the track feels like a very conscious nod to 90s alternative rock and grunge that works in pretty well. As trashy, boring, and basic as some of the genre fusions on this album are, uh, this last leg of this particular track is a shining example of it being done very well. In the second half of the record we have a few transitional cuts that are about four or five minutes. They kind of serve as breathers between the longer, heavier, more intense moments on, on the album. The song Near and the song Night People, both of which are pretty much a total bore on the album. Near washed out guitars, post-rock cliches, barely audible, mumbly, moany, 
faint vocals that uh, the way that they're mixed, they just kind of sound like they're at the volume of background vocals, but they're legit the lead vocals. The song Night People actually features some vocal work from Chelsea Wolfe, but she doesn't exactly save the track or anything like that. Her vocals do bring a somewhat eerie tone to the track that Nier doesn't have, but it's equally as hollow. The song Glint, however, is easily the best cut on this entire album. Not a lull in the entire track, interesting from beginning to end. The gentler guitar rock intro doesn't reek of just overdone, stale post-rockisms. The black metal bits of the song are some of the most vicious on the entire record. It's a multifaceted epic that breezes by 10 minutes. It really is the biggest and brightest spot on the album, and it's kind of sad that it sits shoulder to shoulder with so many aesthetic flubs, like the closing track, Worthless Animal, which is a pretty awkward close to the album. It's a pretty drab combo of atmospheric American black metal and very beige shoegaze, with watery rhythm guitars, soaring, reverbed out lead melodies, then more uninteresting post-rock passages. Eventually, the band does lead the listener to an explosion of guitar, some kind of crescendo, some kind of climax, but two things. At this point, it's too little too late. You've already bored me to tears at this point in the song. And two, it just feels like yet another moment of deja vu in the track list, because as unique as Death Heaven might seem on the surface for how wildly they combine different genres of rock music, a lot of the songs on this thing follow a pretty typical formula, on the longer cuts anyway. Like for songs that are 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 12 minutes, they're not that structurally adventurous. Yeah, I, I don't really care for it all that much. I mean, some bits of some tracks are pretty cool, but there's not really a whole lot here in terms of a full song uh, that I think is just fantastic from start to finish. And unfortunately, since the band's last album, New Bermuda, uh, the, the most boring bits that permeated much of the track list on that record, uh, it seems like the band has only found more ways to incorporate those spots into their newest material. I'm feeling a strong four to a light five on this thing. Tran. Position, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. And uh, over here next to my head is another video that you could check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Death Heaven Forever.